This is the weekend. We uh, welcome our new parochial vicar, Father James Garascio. Um, and he's already made some points with me. He likes dogs. <laughs> and he said he'll ride bikes with me. You know, last, uh, three years ago when Father Mark came here, when Father Mark and I came together, you know, I was at the rummage sale for the youth ministry, um, raising funds for the mission trip. And I thought, Father Mark, this young athletic guy, you know, um, so I, I bought a bike and I had it fixed and repaired and cleaned up and everything. And then he tells me, I don't ride bikes. Um, I've, I've had three years of uh, uh, psychological rejection. Um, uh, and uh, so um, we haven't done it yet, but um, I think well, there'll be some bike riding in my future with Father James. So anyway, we are pleased to welcome him and he is the presider for the mass this morning. Okay, so now a couple announcements before mass. Good morning. Because we are limited by diocesan and state guidelines in gathering a somewhat of a welcome to Our Lady of Mercy, we invite you to participate in a spiritual bouquet for Father James. A spiritual bouquet is a gift of prayer or some other devotional sacrifice in honor of a special occasion. In this instance, the blessing of another newly ordained priest to pastor us, Father James, there is a basket in the atrium where you can place your cards. Our St. Vincent de Paul clothing drive will be on the weekend of July 18 and 19. Collection bags are available outside the church doors. Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider today is Father James with Deacon Mike. Uniting our prayers with Jesus to the Father, we take a quiet moment and invite you to call to mind a specific intention for which you wish to pray during this Mass. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
Well, it is a great joy to be able to be here with you on this, my first Sunday at Our Lady of Mercy. You guys have already been very welcoming and uh, very happy to be here. As Father Don has pointed out multiple times, uh, I am fresh off the press, so to speak, <laughs> just like a little chick coming out of the egg. So here we are. So please be patient with me. I'm a little nervous, but we'll do our best. Also, today we have with us Aliana Lim, who will be receiving her First Communion today, so we welcome her as well as she is able to receive our Lord in the Eucharist for the very first time. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty oh God, God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my, my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, fault through my, my fault, fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. We praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your kingdom shall come to you. A just Savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fall of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise your name. 
God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day, and praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. The Lord is faithful in all his works. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. 
All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, hello, I'm Father James, and uh, as I said before, thank you so much for welcoming me here into your wonderful parish, now my parish as well. Come to me, he says, and I will give you rest. Back in the early 2000s, I attended St. Peter and Paul grade school off in Naperville, far, far away, right? And around the time of fifth grade, something really weird started to happen. Because every time I heard the word priest or priesthood, something inside of me would move. And I don't mean there was like an alien inside of me or something like that, but rather something in my heart would stir. And I had no idea what that was. So, sixth grade came around, and it kept happening. Seventh grade kept happening. Eighth grade, and, of course, it kept happening. Lo and behold, one night on May 5th of 2008, it was a regular Monday night, I remember I had just gotten done with basketball practice and or uh, finished my homework like a good student, of course. And out of nowhere, in the corner of the room, there was a big flash of light. And I dropped to my knees and an angel appeared and said, James, God is calling you to become a priest. And I was like, That didn't actually happen, sorry. Uh, sorry about that. I just had to do that. I love it. So an angel didn't actually appear, but on that night, and I remember that date very specifically because it was on that night that I realized for four years, God had been trying to speak to me, and I had no idea. For four years, he had been moving my heart, and I wasn't listening. But at that moment, I didn't need an angel to appear to me, because our Lord speaks to us personally and individually, and he spoke to my heart, and what he simply and unequivocally was able to communicate to me was that he is calling me to the priesthood. So how do you think I felt at that moment? 14-year-old me, all I knew that I enjoyed in life was food and video games and, of course, girls. So I had no idea what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, but here was God laying out my entire life before me. So how do you think I felt? Was I scared? Yes, indeed I was, because I had no idea what it meant to live as a priest. Was I angry? Well, if this wonderful prospect that the Lord was putting before me meant not having a girlfriend, then yeah, I guess I was kind of angry at that. How about embarrassed? 
Well, it definitely didn't seem like the very cool thing to do at the time, so yes, it was a little embarrassing. And yet, deep in my heart, despite not knowing our Lord, not knowing him personally, his personality, what it's like to be in a relationship with him, there was this calm, as if I was able to hear the echo of someone saying to me, come to me and I will give you rest. But I was doubtful. I barely knew this guy who was named Jesus, so I wasn't ready to just lay down my entire life and walk away from everything that I knew. So I just kept God at arm's length and went to Bennett Academy for high school, where I played soccer, swimming, and volleyball, and worked hard in school, played video games, hung out with friends, and yes, of course, had a girlfriend, all the while knowing that this whole seminary thing wouldn't really have to happen until college because I had found out that I had another four years of freedom until that time rolled around. So again, I kept God at arm's length and life was normal and I thought things were just fine all the while knowing that my little detour would eventually end in seminary. Yet, a funny little thing happened. Because senior year of high school, I went on a retreat, just as all of my friends were doing, uh, a Logos retreat, or for other Catholic schools, a Kairos retreat. And at that retreat, we were asked to, you know, just how are you doing? Where have you been throughout your life? And how happy were you going throughout your life? So I was thinking, okay, well, as a kid, oh, I was a pretty happy kid. And then eighth grade came around and like top of the world, right? You're the kings of the school. So that was pretty great. Freshman year of high school, well, that was awkward. So yeah, of course that went down a little bit. But then I thought, well, where am I at now? And I looked into my heart, which I hadn't really done for years at that point. And as I continued to think about it, I saw this emptiness inside. And I thought, well, that's not good. <laughs> and as I continued to think about it, I came to realize, actually, I'm the least happy I've ever been in my entire life. And yet, I had been getting everything that I want. I was getting good grades in school, I was on the varsity team, I had the girlfriend and we were going out to nice restaurants with my family and stuff like that. Everything I had was provided for and I was able to do as I wanted. And yet, there was this emptiness. So, my last recourse was to throw in the towel and say to God, all right, I guess you've won. Clearly my plan hasn't worked out so well. So I guess I have to follow through with this whole seminary thing. My friends, who made you? Who knows you personally? deeply. If we're honest with ourselves, I think we can admit that oftentimes we barely even know ourselves. We surprise ourselves all the time. And yet, we frequently treat our Creator as if He doesn't know what's good for us, as if He doesn't know us, our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, where we at, what we want. We act as if he's some tyrant in the sky who's asking us all these ridiculous requests and placing these burdens on our shoulders. And yet he says to each one of us, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, 
and I will give you rest. My second night at seminary, I had no idea what I was getting myself into again. I'd never visited a seminary really, and I didn't know any seminarians personally. But I remember just lying in bed at the end of the day, and instead of that emptiness, there was this peace and this joy that I had never experienced before. And I realized at that moment, finally, I was saying yes to the Lord with my life. I was acting on his invitation. And after eight years of growing closer to our Lord in seminary, what have I found? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Indeed, his burden is a delight. I couldn't be happier to be able to stand here before you and say that finally I am a priest of Jesus Christ. But listen, I'm not really all that special, okay? Despite the uh, TV screens out there with my face on them and the bulletin with it right there front and center, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, I'm really not all that special because the Lord doesn't only just speak to me as if I have some magical direct phone connection to him. He desires to speak to each and every one of you as well, to have that relationship with you as well. He wants to show you a renewed life, one full of peace and of joy and of the sweetness that it is to be yoked to him, tied to him, with him, him who made us, who knows us, and who says to each and every one of us, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Turning now towards our Heavenly Father, we offer him our prayers and petitions. That the Lord of heaven and earth may watch over and guard all who lead our church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we welcome Father James, our new parochial vicar, he will feel our support and prayers as a newly ordained priest and his ministry with us be blessed and fruitful, we pray. 
that as we celebrate the founding of our nation, we recommit ourselves to the vision of liberty and justice for all, we pray. Lord. That the nation, leaders of nations may recognize the great responsibility of protecting and cherishing the gift of every person's life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord. That all who labor under unjust circumstances and that all for whom life is a burden may seek rest in the Lord's yoke of freedom, we pray. Lord. For God's healing touch upon those who are sick with COVID-19 and all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, including Jose Salazar, Daniel Rumasek, Veronica Lopez, Juana Lopez, Grandma Goita, Diane Pichulio, Miriam Reyes, Mark Hexima, Nuala Bennett, and Diane Merzek, we pray. For our beloved dead, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever, including Monte Segrist, husband of Julie Segrist, Adam and Irina Marchell, relatives of Beata Marchell, we pray. We pause to pray for your personal intentions and for Edward J. Lynch, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know us through and through. You know all of our prayers even before they are on our lips. Please grant these all of our needs and petitions in accordance with your most holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time for communion, we will be coming to you, so please remain where you are. And if you have brought hand sanitizer for yourself, just sanitize your hands before we get to you, and then we'll give you communion on the hands if you're prepared to receive today.
One Lord of all, one God.
this time we will say the prayer of spiritual communion for those who cannot receive at this moment. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, a great joy to be with you today. Sorry, I'm still working out the kinks uh, as we're going through and learning uh, together. So. I will be outside afterwards. If you want to say hi to me, I'd love to meet you uh, and to say hi to you as well. So thank you very much, everybody. The Lord be with you. Okay. I wasn't trying to get you to do that, but thank you. I appreciate that anyways. And we also, of course, would love to congratulate Aliana Lim on her first communion. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.